And tonight, we are having our quiz to start out with to see how much we have comprehended. And we realize that sometimes we miss some things and sometimes we don't, but we learn just by going over the books of, uh, of, of the, going over the chapters and through this test. So do anybody need a pen? Okay, I know I brought them up here. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else need a pen? All right. Y'all come in. I am so, this is wonderful young lady right here. Do y'all know that she come all the way from Valdosta, Georgia in order to be with us? Amen. 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 We got someone come around the corner. But, but when you know the value of something and you love something, you'll do what you need to do. Amen. And so we thank the Lord for her. And uh, she's, she's been a blessing. She's been in the Evergreen Church since she was a little girl. But we, we thank the Lord for her being here tonight. All right. Acts chapters number one through chapter number five. We are going through the scriptures, through the questions. Question number one, Jesus was sent by, Jesus was seen by the apostles 40 days after his resurrection. Jesus was seen by the apostles 40 days after his resurrection. Number two, the field of blood was a field chosen by the apostles as a place for prayer. The field of blood was a field chosen by the apostles as a place for prayer. Did y'all get a copy of her? Uh, okay, 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 all right. Well, y'all could just write some numbers one through 10 and put, and put true or false down. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thank the Lord for wonderful, you know, this is a wonderful ministry, and we have some wonderful people in this ministry. Thank God for that duo up there working in the sound booth. All right, number three. David the king was also a prophet. David the king was also a prophet. Number four. When Peter reached when Peter preached on Pentecost about 30,000 were added to the church when Peter preached on Pentecost about 30,000 were added to the church number five Jesus's name through faith in his name healed the lame man Jesus's name through faith in his name, healed the lame man. Number six, the hour of prayer was the ninth hour. The hour of prayer was the ninth hour. Number seven, after Peter and John were released, the rulers of the temple brought them back to punish them. After Peter and John were released, the rulers of the temple brought them back to punish them. Number eight, Barnabas sold his land and gave the money to the apostles for the church. Barnabas sold his land and gave the money to the apostles for the church. Number nine, Ananias and Sapphira died because they kept back a part of the money for the land that they sold. Ananias and Sapphira died because they kept back a part of the money for the land that they sold. Number 10, the angel of the Lord released the apostles from prison. The angel of the Lord released the apostles from prison. 
exchange papers with somebody. All right. Okay. As as I read these questions, uh, I don't know if I would have made a hundred if I didn't <laughs> make the test. All right. <laughs> All right. Number one. Jesus was seen by the apostles forty days after his resurrection. True or false? Answer is true. Number two, the field of blood was a field chosen by the apostles as a place for prayer. True or false? True or false? False. false. What was the field of blood? Yeah, it was a land that was bought by the 30 pieces of silver that Judas had given, was given. So they couldn't put it back into the treasury because it was blood money. So they bought a field called the Field of Blood where they buried paupers. All right, number three. David, the king, was also a prophet. True or false? Answer is true. Number four. When Peter preached on Pentecost, about 30,000 were added to the church. True or false? How many were added? All right. That's a lot of people for one sermon, ain't it? All right. Number five. Jesus, name through faith in his name, healed a lame man. True or false? That is true. That's one thing you need to really hold on to because it is his name. It's not just his name, but it's his name through faith in his name that get things done. A lot of people try to use the name of Jesus, but they just use it because they heard somebody else heard it. Use it. But it's, it's his name through faith in his name that get the results. Number six, the hour of prayer was the ninth hour. True or false? That is true. Number, number seven, after Peter and John were released, the rulers of the temple brought them back to punish them again. True or false? Okay, the answer is false. It, it really is. Because when they were released, what did they do? They went to their own company and they rehearsed about what had been done to them. And the Bible says that they glorified God because they were found worthy to be chastised for his name. Did they come back and praise them again? No. Not after they were released. You know, after they released them, why? now they did chastise them before they released them. They chastised them and told them not to preach anymore in that name. And then when they... They went back to the temple. They preached it again. Yeah, but they didn't get them the second time when they went, did they? I tell you what, we can, pastor could have been wrong, but I tell you what, let's do. Let's look at, can y'all pull up the scripture? Okay. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorify God for what that which was done. Now I know that there was a place where they did get punished. I tell you what, I'm just going to give y'all that one either way, okay? Okay, we just give that one because that one kind of be a little controversial because they did chastise them, but it was not after they released them. They chastised them before they released them. Okay, all right. Number, number eight. Barnabas sold his land and gave the money to the apostles for the church. True or false? The answer is true. Number nine. Ananias and Sapphira died because they kept back a part of the money 
for the land that they sow. True or false? I heard somebody say false. Who said false? Why did they get? Why did they die? Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't because they kept back a part of the money. It's because they lied about it. Because Peter told them, say, while the land was yours, you had power over it. And even after you sold it, it was still your decision. Why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? Yeah, but why, and it was, why did you lie to God? So they got, they died for lying to the Holy Ghost, not for keeping back the money because the money was theirs. They could have did what they wanted to with it. They could have just said, I'm giving this portion of it. But the, they, they, they died because they lied to the Holy Ghost. Ma'am? All right, that, so the answer is false. All right, number 10. <laughs> what did you say? Technicality. Yeah. Yeah. They could, they did, but they didn't have nothing to do about that, whether they kept the money or not. It was because they lied. Even after they kept the money, they could have just said, we've given this part and keeping this part, and it would have been fine. But they lied. And see, they thought they were lying to men because they were talking to Peter. But Peter said, you lied to the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all that put on y'all's tithe envelope a dollar. When you should have put two dollars, you lied. <laughs> you lied to God. If you didn't, if you if you got if you ain't got with a dollar, give it as an offering. Don't call it tithe. Cause tithe means ten percent. All right, Pastor now. I don't want none of y'all to fall out in church. Now see, this <laughs> now this is New Testament. This is not Old Testament. They died in the New Testament. And the man died. And they just went off and they didn't give him no funeral. Yeah. All they did was carry him off and put him in the dirt. And then when the woman came and told the same lie, by the time the men got through burying the husband, they came back and picked up the wife, and carried and buried her in the same right beside him. Uh huh. I'm going to tell you, don't play with God. He is not your toy. Amen. Now, he's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God, but he is not your toy. All right. Number 10. The angel of the Lord released the apostles from prison. True or false? True. Answer is true. All right. Let's trade back papers. Yes, ma'am. Can y'all pull up Acts chapter 1, verse 3 for the first lady? Why do we need to pull it up? Okay. Jesus was seen by the apostles 40 days after his resurrection. Okay. To whom he showed himself. We're talking about Jesus. After his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So after he arose from the dead, he no longer went out into the public. He did not teach publicly like he did before he was crucified. After he arose from the dead, he did all of his teaching to the apostles. So my, oh. my question is, so Jesus... Is this saying that Jesus did not show himself until after 40 days? No. So. so How you? Okay, go ahead. All right, just pretend I'm not your wife. I'm just a regular <laughs> member. Okay. So, I don't. Okay. See, like being it. seen of them 40 days. Yes. Okay. Well. In the new King, I know you got King James Version. Yeah, and we made it plain that the quiz came from what? The King James oh, Version. okay, all right, what you got? But I still don't get that. Explain that better. So you saying that 
It took 40 days before Jesus showed himself to anyone. That's not what it said. No, I'm asking you. I'm not your wife. I'm just well, asking I'm saying you. the same thing that it said in that verse. What does it say? It says, after he, was, he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. He was seen by them for 40 days uh -huh. after his resurrection. Okay. All right. I got it. Okay. All right. Now, how many got them all right? All right. Sister Early messed up the curve. Ma'am? Okay. Yeah, which one? Which one is it? The first one? Okay, so it's supposed to be true. Okay, yo, it was a mix-up in the handwriting, okay? So it was a T? Okay, all right. Okay, all right, let me write that down. Well, Pastor, where's your pen? Sister Earlene messed up the curve tonight. Anybody else got them all right? Okay, let me see if I can find Sister Earlene's name down here. All right, that gives Sister Earlene a total of three. All right. How many only got one wrong? Oh, man, Sister Earlene, look around and see what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, she doing like she doing like Brother Mac now, exercising her own strength. All right. Okay, you even got that one right. Okay. The one the one that we were merciful, the merciful question, you even got that one right. That is fantastic. All right. Okay, I'm gonna got two wrong. Okay, well that's not bad. One more time. I'm gonna got three wrong. Okay. Okay, Dad got three wrong. Okay, that's good. All right, well, y'all did good because everybody that read is a winner. All right, that is so good. That was, now, these were some very, very interesting chapters. They were full of really good information. Do anybody want to elaborate on anything that they read? Uh, discuss any particular issue or something that you may uh, that got your attention or something that you don't fully understand because it was really good. Okay, Sister Mac. The man that was at the pool called Beautiful, it didn't take him 40 years to get healed. He just was 40 years old. Right. Oh, you're asking me the question. <laughs> the man was that he, was, was at, he forty years old, or it took up to forty years for him to be healed. The man that was at the beautiful, the gate called beautiful. beautiful. Yes, sir. Yeah, the Bible said he had been he was forty years old. Okay. And they had been bringing him okay. all this time. So it took forty years for him, or he just was forty years old. He was just forty years okay, old. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then the said, that's a long time waiting on your healing. <laughs> well, he actually he wasn't expecting to be healed. The Bible said he was expecting for them to give him something. Because yeah. that was his occupation, was begging. That was his job. That was his job. And they said they didn't have a nickel. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, Pastor, what a Pastor Blair that preached a message about two broke preachers going to church. Because he, he asked Peter and John for something. And they said, we ain't got no money. Uh, but, I, but what I have, I'm going to give it to you. And he gave them something better than money. All right, anybody else? Got anything else uh, to, for your attention? Okay, Sister Masha. Masha. That's okay. We, I mean, we need a mic because she's. When, they're say, when they say um, the hour of prayer was the ninth hour. Bring it to your mouth. When they say the hour of prayer was the ninth, was the, the, the ninth hour. Yeah. Um, my book says three o'clock. Okay, well, that's what, see, we look at it, everything in, in like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 
they always consider everything they call like the ninth hour, the sixth hour, such as that, but it was at three o'clock. That would be the, the okay. ninth hour would be the same thing as three o'clock. Okay. Yeah. It's just another, that's just a more of a modern translation so we can understand it better. Because whenever I look up the ninth hour, I have to find out, well, what is that? Because we don't go, we don't tell time like that. Okay, Brother Sellers. Because I was impressed about the wise man. He was a Pharisee. But when they said, let's kill John and Peter, he said, no. Remember what happened to this other guy? He didn't last long. And then there was another guy. He didn't last long. But if we kill him, you know, ain't no telling. But he said, if it's of God, it'll last. But if it's not, then uh, the same thing happened to them. I was just impressed by his wisdom. Yeah, yeah. And then and talked about how he was noted. He was noted among the people. And he was more observant than the rest of them. Because he said, if you fight against them and it's, and it's God doing it, you fighting against God. That's right. Amen. And that's the same way it is right now. Uh, when God ordains something, don't fight. If you don't understand it, don't, don't jump on it and, and, and try to attack people because you don't understand something or because they're not doing it the way that you would have done or the way you have done it in the past. Just keep your mouth shut. So you'd be better off. Because you don't want to fight against God, because you can't win fighting against God. Okay, uh, Sister Jan, do you have your hand up? Okay, pa pass Sister Jan up. He left him Bible in the car. But um, I want the the part that um, that keeps sticking with me is I believe it's Peter that. Um, when we look at him, we think about him being so spiritual and just so up there and so beyond. But Peter kept reminding people what they did to Jesus. Yeah. It's like, look, have faith in Jesus and Jesus' name and all that. And y'all remember what y'all did to him and y'all <laughs> crucified him and y'all brought yeah. And that just made him so human. You know, I could just kind of relate to, okay, you're right. You, it's kind of hard to let go of what somebody did and then kind of uplift them at the same time so yeah yeah, yeah. every time they they, they, they they peter confronted them he reminded them of what they had done to jesus and that is good sister alicia do you have a mic okay well sister lisa yeah no you sister lisa yeah i get these lisa and alicia kind of tired sometimes I, but i know the difference now okay go ahead I also wanted to piggyback on that with the Peter in Acts 4. The members in um, verse 13, they were very um, amazed at his boldness. But if you look down, I want to say in verses 29 and 30, he prayed for boldness. And I was like, he, to me, he was already being bold, as Jan was saying, speaking his mind and everything. But then in, in verses 29 and 30, he prayed for boldness. And yeah. I thought I was impressed really by that. Yeah, because see... That's the same Peter that was so scared that he denied Jesus three times. And now here he is full of the Holy Ghost. And now he's got boldness that he didn't have. He even tried to provoke him. He, when they want to let him go, talking about, Don't, didn't we tell you not to preach anymore in that name? And Peter say, I'm just paraphrasing, who do you think you are? I'm supposed to obey God. And not me. The same Peter after they threatened him. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit can change your life. He can give you boldness. Okay, uh, Sister Jackie, right there. Thank you. Um, this the scripture that said that everything Jesus had said it was fulfilled. And um, somewhere in the Old Testament it said that God watches over His word to perform it. That it can't even return back to Him void. They had to accomplish the purpose of what you sent. Y'all forgive me, I got some new teeth. But anyway, <laughs> I'm having a time. And see, uh, John kept talking about so that we would believe. The Holy Ghost, when he came, he was a signal that Jesus Christ not only had died, not only had resurrected, but that he had ascended and that he was seated in that spot, making sure we get everything that he said. That's right. That's right. So, so everything, God, God works on his timeline. And the bottom line is God will do what he said he'll do. God is faithful. Hold on to that with everything. If, you, if it don't look like it's happening when God said it's going to happen, 
then you need to find out why it doesn't happen because God is faithful. Mm-hmm. And so the problem is not in God. The problem is in something else. It is not God because God is faithful. Sometimes the conditions are not right. And God, sometimes, you know, God want to do so many things for us and through us, but we're so busy doing other things and got so many other things in our lives that God can't come in and compete against what we are doing. He want to bless you, but you're holding off your own, we hold off our own blessing through disobedience, through a lack of faith. All right, anybody else? Uh, okay, Sister uh, Erlene, our champion for the night. <laughs> hey, Pastor. That's why I think so. <laughs> but um, like the Spirit, the Holy Spirit let me know to listen to you read the word. As I usually be rushing, trying to hurry up, and I can't see it that good. But the Holy Spirit say, just wait till He read it out and then fill it in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good. Okay, Sister Alicia. In Acts one twenty five. I know, 26. Does casting lots mean that it's gambling, Pastor? In reference to Matthias and um, the, them trying to choose that 12th disciple, did they, how, how did that, what Yeah, that I was hoping somebody would bring that up too, but because what happened was like in the Old Testament, that was a way that they determined what God's will was. They believed it wasn't like a chance. They believed that God was in charge of making the, the, the thing fall to where it's supposed to be. Let God do. But you will not find any other place in the New Testament after the Holy Ghost came that they cast lots. See, they knew that that spot was supposed to be filled, and they only had two people that were qualified to fill it. So what they did was they just cast lots and see which one. They believed that whichever one the lot fell on was the one that God had chosen. Now, personally, I believe they were premature. I don't believe, I believe that was what Peter thought that was a good idea, but I don't believe that was necessarily a God idea because he was still, this was still before he received the Holy Ghost because I believe that that 12 apostles was probably supposed to have been Paul. That's my, that's my thoughts about it. But they did that. They know the spot had to be filled, and so they cast lots. But see, after you receive the Holy Spirit, that takes all of the chance out. The Holy Spirit can speak to you and tell you exactly what it is. So you won't ever find where they did that again. They did that before they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So now we got the Holy Spirit, so if we need to know something, we can seek God and let the Holy Spirit reveal it to us. But yeah, that was something that they did, and that was basically an Old Testament practice. But, they, but God was doing something new. Anybody else? Okay, Sister Sherry. Okay, um, I guess I'm going to have to, my question is a little quick detour right here, and I was just thinking about the, um, on the field of blood, when we were kids, it was uh, these weeds that used to grow, I don't know, you know, who all of them here from the country that really grew up way back in the neck of the woods, and um, it was these weeds that would grow up every summer, and they would have little red spots on them, and we would ask my mama, what, 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 what kind of weeds were they? And she used to tell us that that was Jesus' blood on those weeds, and they, every time they grew, they always had those little red spots. And here recently, probably about a year or two ago, I saw some out there where we live, and I thought, well, wow, I hadn't seen those little weeds like that since I was a child, but they always would grow with those. You'd see little red spots all over the weeds. Okay. Yeah. And they they probably grow probably about that high. Okay. Well, we get a lot of things from our parents. It's not necessarily biblical. <laughs> so I ain't going to call your mama wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else got anything? Just one Go ahead. After they had received the Holy Spirit, you won't find what they cast lots again. I was just thinking about when the soldiers cast lots for Jesus' robe. Okay, but that was, now you got gamblers, you're going to have gamblers all your life, and everything like that, and that's what they did. But, I, and they, and you probably found, you might have, if you had some way to go back and see, they probably did. But I'm talking about Christians, okay. people that love God, 
we don't have to roll the dice to find out what God's will is for us. We go to the word of God and we listen to the Holy Spirit. If it's not written in the word of God, then we can go to the Holy Spirit. That's called rhema. See, everything that you need to know is not written in the Bible. For instance, if I wanted, if I got an offer on two different jobs and I want to know what God's will is, I can't go to the Bible and it tell you take this job over here or don't take that job over there. But the Holy Spirit can. The Holy Spirit can let me know this is the job for you. This is the way I want you. This is where I'm going to put you. And so right now we have access to the Holy Spirit so we don't have to be guessing and gambling. If we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit and listen to the Holy Spirit, he will give you instruction. That's what his job is. And, and if we do that, a lot of times, rather than making decisions based on what look like is right, because, see, we be making decisions based upon appearance. Because, see, this job might offer more money. I think I'm going to go and take this job. But you don't know that, that six months down the road, they're going to close that whole business down. You should have got this one over here with a little less money if you just listen to the Holy Spirit. So that's what we have to do. Learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit because he'll speak to you, but he don't make you do nothing. Amen. He don't. He's a counselor. Yes. He's not a dictator. So when we learn to listen, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he'll keep us out of a lot of pitfalls. He'll keep us out of a lot of traps because sometimes he'll tell you don't go over there. And you go over there because you think you're so big and bad, you're so strong, then you get caught up in a trap. All right, anybody got anything else? I'm glad that y'all kept us alone because I did not get anybody to uh, review. And, uh, and the last time, Brother Van volunteered. Do I have a bold soldier in the house that want to give us a few points on a volunteer? Because there's still a lot of information in there that we did not touch. Yes, sir, I'm not a volunteer, but I did want to share a testimony with you. You were speaking about um, choosing a job. I was working with Eunice and Behavior Health as a program manager. And um, you know, I hadn't went to program manager yet, but I felt like I wasn't getting enough money. And so I thought in my mind, I wanted to work at a prison in Bad Austin. And I'm like, okay. My job worked with me. I can go support Jamon when he playing sports and everything. And a boldness came up on the inside of me and said, why don't you just go ask them where they give you what, you what you want? And so I went to my supervisor. She went to the director. They gave me what I wanted. All right. And um, then the job told me they couldn't give me the amount that I wanted, but did the prison. And then it was like, we can give it to you. But then God had it on fixed it for me because I'm like, working at a prison? I don't know I'm being in prison all day with these people. I said, God changed my mind real quick, but it's just how the Holy Spirit, if you really, you know what I'm saying, have the Holy Spirit on the inside and you're and you sensitive to what the Spirit of God is telling you, you can make a lot of better choices when you listen to what God telling you to do. Because that would have been a bad choice for me, riding up and down the Valdosta. When they better been to support my child, I got that $5,000 increase, and I didn't have to travel nowhere. God did that for me. All right, all right. Amen, amen. That's, that's one of the things that you get away from this, uh, that you get from this, get to it, that the God gave us the Holy Spirit for a reason. Yes. See, Jesus, whenever he, he had taught his disciples for three or three and a half years, training them about the kingdom of God. Then when he got ready to go, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believe and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. So he gave them what we call the great commission to go. But then what did he tell them? Don't go yet. You ain't ready. After, after three and a half years with Jesus, he still told them, don't go. He said, don't go until you are endowed with the power from on high, which is the Holy Ghost. Whenever you got preachers trying to preach because they went to seminary, and they learn how to build a sermon. They learn how homiletics and how to, and how to, to, uh, to go through all the procedures, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. They're operating off of human intellect. And anybody can read the Bible and just give instructions out of your human intellect. But you're not going to do it the way God wanted it done unless you are getting instructions from the Holy Ghost. 
That's why he told them, say, you were powerless without the Holy Spirit. He said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. Then you will become my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the outermost parts of the earth. See, we need to make sure that we as believers learn that you can't just say, well, I made up my mind, I'm going to join the church. So you come and you join the church, give the preacher your hand, and they say, give the preacher your hand, give God your heart, and for heaven, make a start. But you were never born again. You never made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior in your life. Then you try to work the work of ministry. You ain't going to be nothing but a confusion. You're going to be so carnally minded, naturally minded, doing everything based upon your human logic. And, and human logic and faith does not go together. Amen. I hope y'all will come tomorrow night to, um, to, to New Life because the message that God gave me for them is based on some similar things. See, you can't serve God with your natural mind and serve in the way that he want to be served. You're wasting time. You need to make sure you get instruction from God and do what God says, like God says it, and you will be successful. Amen. I was listening to um, a couple of ministers on yesterday, went to a minister's meeting, and, and I could just listen to them because they were talking about all the, the people in the church that were, were trying to uh, tell them things contrary to the word of God, and they were just contrary people and that's how it is when you got a bunch of people that's just operating off logic. Because, see, all of us can have different opinions. And your opinion and my opinion might not be the same, but your opinion just as important as my opinion. But the bottom line is, what did God say? Amen. And when you got people that will listen to what God says, you can have peace in your home. You can have peace on your job. You can have peace in your mind when you're right by yourself yeah. if you will listen to God. But it takes training to learn. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. The sheep don't just automatically, the reason the sheep hear his voice is because they become familiar with the voice. See, if somebody can pick up the phone and call you, and you're so familiar with their voice, you know right away who it is. They don't have to tell you who it is because you're familiar with their voice. We need to be so familiar with the voice of God that we know the difference between when it's God speaking to us, when our human flesh speaking to us, and when is the devil? Because you get the devil would try to, the Bible says the devil put it into the heart of Judas mm -hmm. yep. to betray God. So the devil can speak to you. And if you let what the devil say to you get into your heart, you will find yourself following him. Because the Bible says as he think in his heart, so is he. So you have to be careful how to guard your heart. You're going to have thoughts that will come across your mind. And it might seem like a good idea. But it may not be a God idea. Yeah. And if God is not behind it, it's going to bring forth destruction. He, Judas ended up killing himself because he let the devil put something in his heart. So be careful what you allow in your heart. And what you allow in your heart have a lot to do with your environment. Things that have access to your heart. One famous preacher said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop him from making a nest in your hair. And what he said was partially true, because you can stop him from flying over your head if you ain't in no area where no birds are. Yeah, if you're not hanging around evil influence, most likely they're not going to be able to influence you. But if you hang around people that's got evil intent, and they practicing evil things, your heart can be pure, but it can get contaminated by being around somebody else. So be careful who you associate with. All right. Since we didn't have nobody and we just got to talking, we, uh, we're on good time, and so we saved y'all just a few minutes. Now, if there's a brave soldier in here that want to volunteer for next week, because I had somebody in mind but you know what? Somebody told me, Pastor, you didn't give us enough time. You got to give me some more time. So since then, I got self-conscious about it. Because I used to meet y'all on Sunday evening and tell you, will you do it on Tuesday? And everybody said, okay, but one person, 
Pastor, you got to give me more time. Call his name, Pastor. <laughs> Call his name. <laughs> they told me if, you th if a, there's a bunch of dogs out there and you throw a rock, the one you hit, that's the one you go hit the side at. Okay. <laughs> All right. But that did teach me to give people more time. So that's more considerate. So this time, um, probably when we leave here tonight, I'm going to drop somebody and say, will you do it <laughs> next week? So now you have a whole week. Okay? I'm not volunteering. Oh, okay. All right, Sister Anderson. Oh, you two stand. Yeah, go ahead. All right. I just want to remind everyone that fellowship breakfast will be here. Uh, well, let me look at Omega. One or not here. Janice. Fellowship breakfast. Omega back there. I'm and uh, Janice is over there. Uh, uh, fellowship breakfast will be here Saturday at 9 a.m. The women will be in the back and the men, they will meet up front after y'all enjoy your wonderful breakfast. Uh, I, I won't be here. I'm going to celebrate with Dr. Swenson, but you all have someone to lead the women's session and also someone to bring you a word. So come on out and enjoy. And please do not forget me tomorrow night. I don't want to be the only evergreenian standing up there in the midst. So y'all come on. Sister Anderson won't be able to be there because she have her surgery tomorrow. So I don't want to be the Lone Ranger with no Tontos and no Indians. Is anyone, is it anyone that you do not know where the church is? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. I see two, a couple of hands up there. Uh, on, I don't know the physical address written, but it's easy to find. If you're going into Waycross, be just before you cross the bridge, you will see a sign. It's still, it's still daylight, so you still see it. It says New Life, what's that? New Life Community Church or something like that. But you see, they got a big sign right beside the road. And you just turn right there at that sign and go down about two or three blocks and you see it on the right. It's a big building. It's right there. If anybody know where Cross, what's it, Crossview? Crossroads uh, School, private school. It's right down that area. Or if you know where, there's um, what's Stewart, that? Stewart Candy Company. Stewart Candy Company is right there. But if you're going, you, if you cross the bridge, you went too far. If you don't cross, it's right before you cross the bridge. Yes, ma'am. You got it? Okay. All yeah, right. I was going to say just Google it. It'll show you. It's on Golf Course Road, I believe. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So y'all come on out and, uh, and be with us, and we're, we're going to have a good time. There's some wonderful people over there, and um, Pastor Andy Peacock, he is one of my brothers in our ministry group from Ware County, and uh, he's a faithful man of God. Anybody want to give, his wife texts him, I think she texts him about every day, and when she texts him, you know what she calls him? Mm. Big Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, big sexy. Okay. All right. <laughs> With that, we're going to go home. All right. Let us stand. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people that have come out to hear your word, to share your word. And Father God, we know that we are better because we know your word. And your word makes us stronger. Your word gives us victory over every area in our lives. And so we believe it, we receive it, we love it, and we thank you for it. As we leave this place, Lord God, let your angels have charge over us and keep us safe. And we will give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.